placement. We have a good mix of experienced VISTA supervisors and, to our delight, some new affiliates and new potential new supervisors of VISTAs. Um, this is April Reardon. If I sound kind of echoey, it's because I'm in a room in Owatonna uh, with some other folks, some Southern Minnesota um, executive directors who are doing some networking today. And so I know we have a couple more who will be joining us in this room, but I do have um, Pat Hayden and Tina Zimmerman from the Steel Wasika affiliate in here with me, and we'll be adding some more. Um, so maybe at some point we'll turn the webcam on and show you all of us here together. All right, Sarah, if we can go forward here. All right. Um, as many of you know, the Capacity Building Webinar Series is a monthly web conference hosted by Habitat Minnesota. Uh, we'll continue this in 2014 with web conferences on the last Wednesday of each month, right at this same time. Uh, next month, though, we have a special web conference, and it will be held at an evening time. So on February 26th, our webinar will be from 6 until 7.30, and it's I'm a Good Board Member, Aren't I?, with Lori Jacobwith. It was really popular uh, last spring when we offered it, so we'd like to do that again in case you have recruited new board members or have board members who really want to kick off the year uh, with some good training. So hopefully we can get lots of board members signed up for that. Uh, and then in March, we'll have uh, Larry Mancini talking about Keystone. We were trying to get him to the conference, but we're going to get him on a webinar instead. So uh, most of you, again, have done this before. So how to participate in the webinar. We hope that you will uh, raise your hand if you want to talk with us. We, everyone is muted right now just to control background noise and sound, but we can unmute everybody and um, you can just talk with us if you have a uh, phone or um, microphone access. Um, you can also type into that uh, question panel and you can put comments in there or questions. Um, so hopefully we will uh, make this a really interactive session. And let's see, we just do have a couple of polls. So we'd like to know sometimes, much like today, we're in, here I am in Oatana, we do have Bridget and Nancy with us too, Nancy from Winona Fillmore, and Bridget Campbell with Freeborn Moore um, are in the room with us now too. You guys can say hi. Hi! <laughs> so there's five of us here on one computer or on one registration, so just wanting to know for all of you um, how many people are participating with you today. Oh, 100% voted. Okay. Here we go. So it looks like everybody else is participating in isolation. Uh, and then um, I'm going to skip that other one, Sarah, and just turn it over to you, okay? Okay, sounds good, April. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Oops. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. Wonderful. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. It's great to um, be here with, well, <laughs> I'm I'm sitting in a, a uh, in contrast to April, who's um, in Owatonna with a gr sitting in a room with five others. Um, I'm back here at Habitat Minnesota. Um, it's actually sitting in April's office um, by my lonesome. So um, it's fun that we can all connect virtually um, through the wonders of technology today. So, um, but thank you all for being with us today to um, talk more about the Habitat for Humanity um, AmeriCorps VISTA program. Um, so I think I've met almost all of, um, all of you, but my name is Sarah Wessling um, and I've been here with Habitat Minnesota um, for um, for just over 10 years now um, as the VISTA program manager. So, um, you know, have a lot of experience working with this program and um, we're, you know, looking forward to um, working 
uh, with some of you who are new um, and interested in the program. And then uh, we also have some experienced folks who are um, looking at um, applying for another VISTA as well. So we're glad you could join us today to just um, learn more and do some sharing about um, the VISTA program and, and hopefully get questions asked um, that you might have, um, especially if you've not participated in the past and are new to the program. Okay, so um, we'll just start, I'm going to start off just by um, giving a little overview of um, what, what the VISTA program is. Um, so VISTA is um, short for, I guess, AmeriCorps VISTA, um, and VISTA stands for Volunteer in Service to America. Um, now some of you you may be familiar and have heard of VISTA. It was actually created um, back um, around the same time that the Peace Corps was created um, back in the 1960s. Um, and then in the early 90s, uh, the AmeriCorps program um, was created and, and VISTA became, kind of came under the umbrella of, um, of, the, Amer of the AmeriCorps program. So we're now known as AmeriCorps VISTA. Um, and so VISTA is a national service program administered by the federal government and the agency that admi administers it is called the Corporation for National and Community Service, um, or often we just refer to them as the corporation for short. Um, so, and VISTA members are, um, serve full time. So they're, uh, they serve for 40 hours a week for um, one year. So uh, with our program, the um, VISTA that we'll be talking about today um, would start in um, the beginning of August 2014, and then they they would serve one, one full year, so through August of 2015. Um, so it is a full-time commitment, 40 hours per week, um, and the VISTAs are, will be doing um, what we call capacity building um, projects. Uh, so next up here, we have a photo of our uh, lovely group of smiling faced VISTAs. Um, so the, what you'll see next here is um, the VISTAs who are currently serving uh, with Habitat for Humanity here in Minnesota. Um, we're, right now we have um, about 15 people on board. Um, some of the folks you see in the photo here are um, VISTAs who started in February of 20. Let's see, that would have been February 2013. So they're going to be finishing up here in just a few weeks. Um, but then the, um, the, ooh, little technical. <laughs> Sorry, my slides just decided to rewind for me. Okay. Um, Let's get back here. Okay, here we go. There's our smiling faces again. Um, so that's our current um, cohort, as we call them sometimes, of VISTAs um, who are serving with Habitat across the state. Hopefully, either some of them, well, I know some of you have the, these VISTAs in your offices, um, uh, but for, the, for others, you'll hopefully have a chance to meet many of them at the um, OLE conference coming up in March. Um, so what what is it that VISTAs do? Um, so what we say is that VISTA is a capacity building program. Um, so we have, um, so they're doing projects that are designed to help build the capacity of your Habitat for Humanity affiliates. Um, and specifically, we have two, um, two main goal areas for the program. Um, so the first goal would be um, VISTAs can develop new programs that will um, help your affiliates to serve more families. Um, and, uh, and in contrast to that, our second goal is that VISTAs can um, carry out activities which improve and grow existing programs. Um, so just a little bit to get more, a little more specific about what that means. So when you think about VISTAs developing new programs, examples of that would be um, things like starting up new, new programs. So if your affiliate's looking at um, starting an A Brush With Kindness program, um, a VISTA can be a great resource um, for you to come in and do um, kind of a feasibility study to find out, you know, what is the need for um, a home repair program in your community, who are potential partners in the community that you could work with, what are potential funding sources to support it. Um, 
you know, what kinds of policies would you need to carry out a program like that? Um, so VISTAs can be a really great resource to get something new going, whether it's a brush with kindness um, or a restore, um, or if you're looking to engage more youth. Um, in the last couple of years, we've really seen VISTAs do some exciting work with youth engagement, um, you know, getting youth volunteer groups to um, participate with your affiliate or starting up even um, Youth United programs in your community um, that would uh, be a more sustained partnership. Um, VISTAs can also be a great resource to help you organize a women build project um, if that's something that your affiliate's been wanting to do but you know just haven't had the people power to get it up and going. A VISTA can be a great resource to launch something like that. Um, in terms of improving and growing existing programs, um, some of the areas where we've seen a lot of success in recent years um, are VISTAs helping improve um, family selection programs. So, you know, we've habit here at Habitat Minnesota, we've, you know, heard of the struggles that some affiliates have had in finding families, finding qualified families um, for the, the home projects, for the homes that you'd like to build. Um, and if so, if that's an area that your aff affiliates had challenges with, um, a VISTA can be a great resource to come in and again, do some, you know, research to help your affiliate get to the bottom of why it is that you're struggling to find families. You know, is it the need to do more outreach so that you get more applications coming in? Or is it something about the, you know, the population in your service area that they struggle, that they um, struggle to meet the, um, the minimum qualifications? Um, and so is, are there other services that you can offer to help families who, you know, reach the threshold that they need to to qualify? Um, things like that. Um, VISTAs can also be a great resource for strengthening your family support programs. Um, so if you are, if you have families that are already homeowners but are struggling um, in different ways, you know, a VISTA could help you assess is there training that your affiliate could offer? Are there um, programs in the community that they could be referred to to help, um, you know, get them in a better position so that they're able to be successful as homeowners? Um, VISTAs can also be a great resource for growing your volunteer programs, um, for developing um, communication tools, um, or expanding your fund development efforts. Um, the key thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about what would you want a VISTA to do is that it really needs to be focused on capacity building as opposed to what we call direct service. Um, so, VISTAs are, are not a resource for, you know, to have on your job site or on your, you know, build sites, helping to build the houses and doing that hands-on work. That's not, that's a, not a role that's appropriate for a VISTA member. They're more behind the scenes, um, you know, organizational development type projects are, um, are what are the types of things that um, the, the funder for VISTA, the corporation, what they um those are the kinds of roles that they would like to see members do. Um, does anybody have, um, if anyone has any questions about, you know, the, um, about what VISTAs can do or can't do, um, please feel free to chat those in or raise your hand and um, we can um, call on you to um, address your questions. Um, and that goes for, I guess, anything as I'm going through the webinar today. If there are questions that you have about information that I'm covering, please do raise your hand or send us a chat message. Um, so, for example, here, um, I see a question coming in, came in from Sarah um, Rotaring uh, with... Uh, with our with Brown County Habitat, um, so Sarah was asking, can a Vista recruit volunteers um, or work on that during a build? Um, so yes, uh, you know there are Vista roles for developing volu your volunteer program. So um, a, a Vista can help you um, develop strategies for recruiting volunteers in your community who would who to do construction on the build sites. Um, so the idea would be, um, you know, rather uh, Vista, you can really leverage the benefit of a Vista. So it, it's, um, you know, what 
you can use Avista to develop a recruitment strategy to get those um, worksite volunteers on the site rather than having the Vista be the one to go out and do the building on the build site because you, the, a Vista is a one-year resource whereas if you leverage um, their efforts they can bring in more volunteers who can stay with the, who will hopefully stay with the organization more long term. Um, so I hope that answered your question Sarah if not um, feel free to raise your hand and we can um, we can explore that explore that more. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, what VISTAs can do. Um, and so you might be asking yourself, why would somebody want to be a VISTA? Um, so here are some of the, the benefits for, um, for VISTA, for people who um, sign on to serve as a VISTA. Um, the typical demographic, I would say, for a VISTA member, and as you maybe could note, note from the, the photo that I shared of our smiling faces um, at the beginning of the webinar, um, many of our VISTAs are young folks who are just graduating um, from college or who are early in their careers, and they're really looking to get hands-on experience and professional development um, opportunities so that they're positioned um, better for um, for a career um, after their VISTA term is over. So, um, so it's really a professional development opportunity. Um, Habitat Minnesota, we organize several trainings for them. And we also, you know, encourage affiliates to provide um, VISTAs with the opportunity to do networking and participate in local trainings in your community. Um, so as I mentioned, VISTAs serve full time, and so they do receive a monthly living allowance just to help cover their basic living expenses. Um, now it's a modest living allowance. They, depending on the, the area of the state that you're in, the VISTAs earn anywhere from $928 a month to $983 a month. So that's you know less than $1,000 to cover their living expenses, which includes housing and food and and those sorts of necessities. So, um, you know, this, it, it is a program where, um, you know, you know, it's important that either, uh, I think when you're recruiting folks for the position that, that they understand what the compensation is and, you know, that they're really able to, um, survive and make do on the amount that they'll receive. Um, so, um, but, you know, we do. We have vistas every year who uh, sign on to do this and who are able to do it um, through a variety of creative ways of stretching, stretching their dollars. Um, one of the big incentives. So you might be wondering why would anybody sign on to for to earn a thousand dollars a month and do this for a year? Um, well, one of the other benefits they receive is that when they've completed their year of service, they receive an education award of five thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and that can be used to pay either um, their um, student loans if they if they've graduated and have student loans, or if they're thinking about continuing their education, they can use it to pay tuition um, or other education approved educational expenses. Um, we do have VISTAs who are, um, you know, folks who are farther along in their career, who are maybe even early retirees. And so for them, an education award might not be um, something that that would that they'd be interested in or have any need for. Um, so there is an option for any VISTA to opt instead to receive a $1,200 cash stipend at the end of their service. Um, and that $1,200 they could use for any anything that they would like. Um, so there, there are those two options for an end of service benefit. Um, also, you know, because the VISTAs are um, li living on a very um, limited income during their year of service, um, they do, they may be eligible to have their student, to have forbearance on their student loans so that they don't have to make, be making payments. Um, it, that does apply um, only to specific kinds of loans and loan holders aren't required to give them forbearance. Um, so if that is something that, um, you know, somebody who's considering um, applying for a VISTA position with you is interested in, it's always good that to suggest that they contact their loan companies to find out if they provide loan forbearance for AmeriCorps service. Um, there is also a limited health benefits plan. Um, it's a very, you know, bare bones um, coverage that it's not health insurance, but it covers, you know, if they are injured or become ill 
during service, they can, um, you know, get medical care and have that expense covered. Um, that, that health benefits does not include um, pre-existing conditions. Um, and it, it also does not meet the minimum requirements of the new Affordable Care Act. So if um, they don't have any access to any other type of coverage, for example, through their parents or, or other things, then they may have to either buy additional coverage to meet that minimum qualification, or they may have to pay a penalty um, if, if they don't receive that. So that's a new development with the Affordable Care Act. Um, um, Sarah? Yeah. Uh, Nancy, would you, so Nancy was wondering um, about the health benefits and mm -hmm. if you think that will change, is that a good, yeah, can you hear Nancy if I do, if she doesn't get up to move, let's just try it. Sure. Sarah, from a recruiting standpoint, um, I think that's a really big issue that the, the plan that they're offering does not meet the minimum requirements, and I'm just wondering if you think that that might change before yeah, you know, it's it's really hard to say. I agree, Nancy. It's really troubling that that um, that the the AmeriCorps health benefits don't meet the minimum requirements, and we've expressed concern, as have many others, about that. Um, I'm getting some echo, so I might mute you all. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll mute. Myself. Okay, there. Um, so. Um, this, you know, again, this is a really new develop or development in terms of with the Affordable Care Act requirements coming into play. So, initially, what we were hearing is that there was no cha no plan to make any changes to the AmeriCorps health benefits, but I they did just send out some information um, earlier this week um, that was a little <laughs> more uh, squishier in the language, saying that they may, you know, consider. Um, looking into options for making changes. So it's really hard to say, I guess, at this point of whether we can expect there to be any change before August. Um, but, um, you know, there there might be other options that we could look into in terms of, um, you know, helping VISTAs access additional coverage that would help them meet those minimum requirements. So we'll keep you posted on that, but we hear you and we're passing those concerns along um, to the, the powers that be at the, at the national level who, you know, have the control um, over that health benefits program. Uh, so one other uh, benefit that um, VISTAs also um, are eligible for is that um, after they complete their service, they have, they, um, have non-competitive eligibility status when applying for federal jobs. Um, so that doesn't mean that they're guaranteed a federal job. It just means in the when if they are interested in working for the federal government and apply for a federal position, um, they can re they receive a special eligibility status. Um, you know that could if you're familiar with how the federal you know, hiring process works. It's there's sort of a point system and preferences given for different statuses. So it, it gives them a little leg up in that in that federal jobs um, application process. Uh, so those are, you know, some of the, the key benefits um, there. I did also, um, I'll review this later in the webinar, but I've posted some additional details and information about the VISTA health benefits in a document in the Google Drive that you can access after the webinar to review for more information. Okay, so... Um, Let's, I just wanted to um, review some of the requirements for affiliates that are interested in applying um, for VISTAs. Um, so if your affiliate is looking to apply, key things to know are that there, um, there is, if you are, if your affiliate is selected to host a VISTA, there is a contribution that your affiliate will need to make to help cover the cost of the program. Um, we do receive a grant uh, to fund, you know, the majority of the cost of, of the, you know, of we pay that we use that grant to pay the VISTA members and pay other expenses. Um, but that does the grant doesn't cover the full cost. So $4,000 per member um, is what an affiliate would need to pay. Um, for those of you that have participated in the past, um, for several years, the fee has been $3,900. So we are move, uh, kind of creeping up at just $100 um, for this last year. So it'll be $4,000 per VISTA. Um, for any positions that you're approved for. 
um, supervision of the VISTA is really key to the, their success. Um, and, you know, we've been operating this program for, um, well, that program's actually been in existence for 16, nearly, well, 15 years this year. It'll be 16 next year. Um, and I've been with the program for 10. And one of the things that we've learned through experience is that um, in order for a VISTA to, to be able to be successful in building capacity, they really need to be supervised either by the executive director of the affiliate or a paid staff member um, as, you know, rather than a volunteer or a board member. Um, you know, we've tried other supervisory arrangements. We've tried having board members supervise VISTAs um, and have just found that that's, um, hasn't been a successful model for, um, for providing the kind of supervision and and for bringing the kind of sustainability um, to the work that a VISTA does um, and making sure that it lasts beyond just their year of service. Um, so that it is required that there that either the ED or a staff, a paid staff member of the affiliates serve as the supervisor. Um, just going back for a second, another great question um, that came in about the fee. Um, so Sarah um, asked if the if the fee is due when the VISTA is approved or when they start. Um, actually, the fee, we would invoice the affiliate for the fee after you're approved. Um, and typically we ask that those fees are submitted by um, the beginning of May. Um, if that, and if that's an issue for your affiliate, then, um, you know, please let us know and we can, um, and, and we can work with you on, on the timing of that payment. But um, the fee is due before the VISTA starts because there is a, you know, a lot of work that goes in on the front end in terms of recruitment and other things that, you know, we need to, to cover the cost of uh, the support that goes into, you know, helping you all find the VISTA candidates. So the fee is due um, typically the beginning of March. Um, let's see. So I talked about supervision. Um, your affiliate should also be prepared to provide the VISTA with, off, with an office space, with a computer, internet access, and, and also, you know, access to other essential office equipment. Um, so, you know, the, the VISTA should be based in the affiliate office. Um, if your affiliate's in a situation where that's not possible, you know, please get in touch with me so we can talk about what your situation is and if that's a feasible arrangement, um, you know, for for a VISTA to, if it, you know, if you don't have an office where the supervisor and the VISTA would be based out of together, then we should chat about what that arrangement would look like and, and if that would be feasible. Um, in addition, there are some, you know, some expenses related to um, a VISTA placement that aren't covered by the grant, uh, for example, mileage reimbursement. Um, so any travel, any work related travel that your VISTA would do as part of their service. Um, for example, if you if they would need to travel to another community in your service area for a meeting, um, you know, you, your affiliate would be responsible for reimbursing them for that mileage um, expense. Um, also, we, you know, for any trainings that they attend, um, whether it's VISTA trainings or the OLE conference, um, you'd need to cover the cost of their travel to that event. Um, you know, hopefully, um, often there might be other staff from your affiliates or you as a supervisor attending those trainings so you could carpool. But if not, um, you'd either need to reimburse their mileage or or pay for a rental car for them to, to travel to those activities. Um, there might also be, you know, local training specific to the position um, that your affiliate should budget for, um, you know, any additional supplies. If, if you're wanting the VISTA to do um, communications kind of work and they're going to need access to software, um, you know, design software to do that, then, you know, those are the kinds of expenses you should budget for or plan for so that you have the resources and equipment that the VISTAs need to um, do what they need to do. Hey, April. Hey, Sarah. There's a question here, um, mm -hmm. just to clarify that Habitat Minnesota trainings, like the conference or other events that we put on, that those trainings are part of the VISTAs program. The affiliate doesn't need to pay for those. We often help with um, accommodations or lodging. It would yeah. just be the mile, just the mileage to get to those mm -hmm. events. 
Yes, yeah. So the registration fee to attend, you know, for example, the OLE conference, we pr we cover the cost of the registration fee through the Vista grant. So it wouldn't be the registration fee for the training necessarily for for Habitat Minnesota trainings. But but if there's a training in your community that another organization is sponsoring that would be beneficial to your Vista, then you know to that might be a training expense that your affiliate would would cover, you know, their registration to attend something maybe sponsored by a local um, foundation or something like that. So great, thanks for the question. Um, other requirements, there is there are progress reports and a performance review um, that um, an affiliate would need to complete. Uh, and uh, so supervisors would, uh, participate in doing progress reports. Those are done quarterly, and there is a mid-year performance review, and then one at the end of their VISTA term. And we provide you with um, resources and training um, on, on doing those things. Um, and then finally, in order to qual be qualified to have a VISTA, your affiliate must be in good standing with Habitat for Humanity International. Um, and that's true of all Habitat Minnesota programs. If, if, if there's any if your affiliate is not in good standing with HFHI, you're not eligible to participate in, in programs until you get um, in good standing. So um, that's just another requirement to be aware of. Okay, um, let's see. Um, you know, one thing, just going back to the fee for one minute, um, the $4,000 fee that we talked about earlier, one other thing I should mention about that is that the the program participation fee, that $4,000, is a non-refundable fee. So if your affiliate is approved for, if you apply for a VISTA and you are approved, we are expecting that you will follow through with the process of hosting a VISTA and paying the fee um, and moving forward. Um, if there is any chance that your affiliate might change your mind about actually um, taking a VISTA placement if you are awarded one, that's something that's really important to chat with me about in advance because we award exactly the number of positions that we're able to fund and that we're required to, to place through the grant. And if we don't fill all of those positions, that is, um, you know, then we're in a, not in a good um, position with our funder because they're expecting us to use all the funds that we've been provided. And it also could mean um, that there's another affiliate that we've already told the turn down for a VISTA. And so if you then change your mind, um, you know, there's not always the time. We don't always have enough time to get another, to give that VISTA to some, to another organization. So it's really important that if there's any question that you would, that of you being able to follow through on having a VISTA that you um, chat with me hey, about Sarah, that. Sarah, we lost your audio for just like 20 seconds there. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I was just reiterating that if there's any reason that your affiliate might not you know, that you're going to apply, but that you're questioning whether you'd actually follow through on, on a VISTA placement if it was awarded to you. Um, you know, that's something that's really important to um, just talk with me about so that I have an understanding of what the situation is. So when we're making decisions about placements, we don't, um, you know, miss out on placing a VISTA with another affiliate um, because, um, because someone backs out of the process. Um, okay, so just want to hit on some things related to recruitment and training. Um, so affiliates are resp are ultimately responsible for recruiting their VISTA members. Um, Habitat Minnesota will provide you with a great deal of support. Um, we will do a lot of outreach um, to get the word out about the positions, but we also need your help, especially in getting the word out locally um, in communities in greater Minnesota um, to find candidates for the for these VISTA positions. So again, we'll provide you with training and resources related to recruitment if you're approved for a placement. Um, but, you, you know, there is, a, you know, we do need you all to, um, to help out with that process of getting applicants for, for these VISTA positions. Um, and if you're not able to find a qualified um, candidate, then, um, we're not able to refund your fee. So, you know, because 
again, we'll, we're going to do a lot of work with you to make sure that you don't get in that situation. Um, you know, but it's, you know, it does take effort on the affiliates part too. So that's part of the partnership um, that's involved in this program is, um, you know, ultimately uh, affiliates are responsible for finding their, their candidate and we will work with you and provide you with support, but, um, but it will take time on your part to help with that process. Um, VISTA candidates um, have to do an online application and that includes two written references and they must be professional references. Um, so if, if you already have somebody in mind for a VISTA position and there's somebody that's volunteered with you and you're thinking, oh, I'll just write, I'll be the person to write their references or write a reference for them. Actually, <laughs> we can't accept, um, you know, if you're going to be the VISTA supervisor, you can't write that person a reference. We need professional references from an outside party um, or somebody else, you know, maybe a board member or committee member from the affiliate could could provide a reference, but they need to be professional references. We can't take a reference from their um, next door neighbor um, who they cat sit for, um, you know, and that's that's not my rule. <laughs> that's the, the corporation, um, for our funder for this program, they um, require professional references for the candidates that are recruited. So again, just something to keep in mind. Um, Let's see. So, um, so we'll work with you on the recruitment process. The slide just kind of lays down some of the, the, um, the requirements. Um, let's see. Uh, so Sarah um, has another question for us. Um, so if we are unable to find somebody who is already approved as a VISTA, can someone else who hasn't previously expressed interest in a VISTA position be approved? Um, so yes, there, the approval process doesn't happen till the end. So we don't have a pre-approved set of people for positions. Um, what there is is an online application site where any anyone from can go online and apply for and fill out an application for a VISTA position. Those applicants are not pre-screened. Um, so anybody that applies to for a position with your affiliate, you'll receive a notification that an application has come in and you can go in and refer that or review that application and then follow up with if they're a candidate you're interested in. Um, they're not pre-approved, um, but that's part of the support that we provide to you here at Habitat Minnesota is that we'll review the applications that you're interested in and provide you guidance on, you know, is this somebody who we anticipate any issues um, getting approved or are they, um, you know, are there follow up questions that would need to be um, to be addressed before moving forward with them. Um, so we'll, you know, work really closely with you to make sure that you that the person that you want to select and um, that that we have answered all the questions that there might be about them in order for them to get approved in advance. Um, so so absolutely, if there's somebody in your community who's never heard of the VISTA program, um, but that you think could be a good fit, encourage them to go online and, and do the VISTA application um, and get some references in, and then we can start them in the process of screening and evaluating, you know, our would they be somebody who uh, would be a good fit and who would be approved by the corporation? So thanks again. Um, great question, Sarah. Um, other things to know, the VISTA candidates are, are required to attend a pre-service orientation in the Twin Cities before starting their service. Um, that the cost of that, you know, training is covered by the corporation um, and but that is a requirement that they have to attend that. So um, you should make sure that, you know, the people that you recruit are comfortable traveling and, you know, being out of, you know, being at a um, training out of town or in the Twin Cities for a few days. Um, let's see. And then Habitat Minnesota will also organize trainings um, for VISTA members, um, including the early service training, and that will um, include um, a day of training with the VISTA supervisor, um, which has, um, we found to have a lot of success in that. Um, great. Okay. So we've talked about recruitment and training. Um, I just want to hit on some of the key policies. Um, again, 
so these are policies and prohibited activities uh, um, re of the corporation for national and community service. So um, I'm noticing just a little bit of a delay. So I'm not sure if the next slide is, oh, here we go. Okay. Um, so the next, um, some of the key things also to keep in mind, um, if your affiliate is selected um, to host a VISTA, there is a memorandum of understanding um, that, so basically a contract um, that you all would, that your affiliates would need to sign, um, you know, saying that you'll comply with, um, with the requirements of this federal grant program. Um, so some of those requirements include um, your affiliate must comply with the corporation's non-discrimination and sexual harassment policies. Um, those are outlined in the MO, MOU um, and there'll be a sample of that available for you to review on the Google Drive. Um, VISTAs may not engage in political activities as part of their duties. Um, so VISTAs aren't, um, it's not permitted for VISTAs to do advocacy, um, you know, organizing or um, letter writing campaigns or those sorts of things as part of their duties as a VISTA. Um, because it's a federal program, there are, you know, just restrictions on what um, they're allowed to do. So obviously for, for reasons that I'm sure we can all understand when you have programs funded by Congress, um, uh, they don't want the members doing political activities. Um, in addition, uh, also, VISTAs are not allowed to give religious instruction, to conduct worship services, or in to engage in other religious activities as part of their duties. Um, so Habitat as a faith-based organization, you know, that's an important part of, of who we are as an organization is, um, you know, being a Christian um, organization. I know, you know, some affiliates you may, you know, have do prayers um, on your work site with your volunteers before starting your the work day or as part of your um, committee or board meetings that, you know, might be part of, of what you do. Um, you're not required to change. Um, change what you do as an affiliate, um, you know, as a faith-based organization, you're still allowed to do those things. But what's prohibited is that you can't have your VISTA be the, you know, have it part of your res VISTA's responsibilities to lead prayer before a meeting or to organize a, um, you know, a worship service fundraiser um, at a local church that, you know, includes um, religious um, content. So um, this isn't restricting VISTAs from doing those activities in their personal life. You know, they may still participate in the faith community, um, you know, as part of, of what they do in their, you know, just in their day-to-day -day life. But as part of their VISTA activities, they, they may not participate in these religious activities. Again, this is a requirement of, because this is a federal program, it's one of the restrictions. Um, let's see. And um, so, and then the final um, key policy to be aware of is that um, all of the VISTA placements um, have to be approved by the Corporation for National and Community Service. Um, so I mentioned this earlier when we were talking about recruitment. They have to um, so only the corporation can approve a VISTA placement and only the corporation can remove or terminate a VISTA. Um, so if, if your affiliate applies to host a VISTA and, and you're approved for that, um, it's really important that you stay in communication with us about how things are going um, and if there's any um, performance issues or um, or, or any kind of challenges um, that are happening because um, we, a part of our role is to provide you with support to help navigate those issues and, um, you know, and hopefully improve the situation. But if there are, you know, issues that mean it's just not working out for your affiliate, um, we have, we need to start, um, we need to be aware of that 
as soon as possible so that we can be working with you and working with the corporation um, about what the and keeping them informed of what the challenges are. Um, the worst thing that can happen is, you know, from time to time, I've gotten a call from a VISTA supervisor who is at the end of their rope, who has a VISTA that's, you know, this has happened on rare occasions, but <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes people wait until it's gotten so bad that they just can't take it anymore. And when it's gotten to that point, if this is the first we're hearing of it, it's really difficult to have to then go to our funder and say, this VISTA isn't working out. We know it's been going on for a long time, but we haven't told you about it. And now you need to do something um, that is not well received. So um, if there are challenges um, happening, please communicate with us right away so that we can work with you on either improving the situation or if it's not a good fit on, you know, figuring out what the process would be to remove that person um, from your site so that, um, you know, it, without it becoming a last minute sudden crisis. Okay, so key policies and prohibited activities. Um, great, and I see a, pro a question coming in here too from Abigail. Um, so Abigail asks, is there a process that the supervisor can follow in order to document behaviors? In other words, a write-up process like verbal warning, written warning, et cetera. Um, yes, there, you know, typically what we recommend is that in your affiliate um, um, employee handbook, um, there's hopefully a um, process outlined in there for addressing um, performance issues. So that would, you know, your affiliate or you as a supervisor could follow that process. But again, it's something where um, it, if you, in addition to following the process, you need to make sure to keep um, Habitat Minnesota, keep me as a VISTA program manager informed that there is an issue, um, you know, that if there has been, if, ha if warnings have been given, either verbal or written, you know, make sure to communicate with me about that so that, um, again, it so that it doesn't get to the point where suddenly you're like, oh, this has been going on and now we've gone through our process and we're ready to remove them. Um, but you know, that shouldn't be the first time I hear about it is when you're, when you've gone through all the steps in the process. Um, we need to kind of be in communication throughout that process. Can I, this is April and yeah. um, I was just listening to that. And I think when we were talking about the benefits of VISTA, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just because of time, we just moved along. But one of those benefits for, particularly for these younger, or less experienced VISTAs is that this is their might be their first professional position or they get to learn some of those things. So letting you, I've watched it happen in just my short time with Habitat to see how, if people are, keep you in the loop or keep the VISTA leader in the loop, that they're able to work through any early issues. Sometimes those things are insurmountable. Sometimes it's just the, the, the wrong person or a wrong, a bad fit, but it's nice to see what VISTAs and then the VISTA supervisors too, how much they learn just from that experience. And so it's super supportive. Let them know early on. It's awesome. Great. I've got Bridget here too. Wonderful. Great. Thanks. Um, well, and just to um, add, add, thanks April for sharing that. I think that's a good point. And, you know, also I will say, you know, I've worked with the VISTAs and supervisors for 10 years. And so, you know, I've, I, I've seen the challenges that can, um, that supervisors have experienced. And, um, you know, I can, I'm here to be a resource and help to support you as a supervisor and working through those issues. Um, so don't, you know, rather than trying to sort it out by yourself or go through it alone, um, you know, please look to me as a resource to um, help, you know, guide through those challenging issues if they come up. Um, great. Well, next I um, have asked a couple of our supervisors um, who are, well, who I'll call our experienced supervisors to just share a little bit with us about their experience um, with the VISTA program. Oh, and there's April and there's, yay, Bridget. Hi. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so Bridget Campbell is with us um, and Bridget is the executive director of Habitat for Humanity Freeborn Mauer. And I wanted to, I had asked um, Bridget if she would just share a little bit um, about her experience working with her VISTA this year, Andrea, um, just 
for a little bit of context, um, so Bridget is a new executive director and the first executive director um, of that, of Freeborn Mauer Habitat for Humanity. So um, I think she has a really unique perspective on as a new ED, a new person t- coming into an affiliate that hadn't had an ED in the past on, you know, the value that Avista can bring in moving things along. So um, Bridget, I'm going to turn it over to you and just ask you to share a little bit, describe, you know, what Andrea, your Vista has done and some of the impact of, of what, of, of her efforts so far. Okay, sure. So first of all, I just want to give a little background on where our affiliate was at before we had a Vista. Um, so uh, when I started in December of 2012, uh, our affiliate had not built a built a home in over a year, mainly because we had no families to build for at that time. Um, and so when we were looking to get a Vista, it became very evident that we really needed to focus on family selection. If there's no families to build for, then why are we why are we here? So um, we, I, and I went through the very extensive um, application and recruitment process and wound up with um, a Vista. Her name is Andrea. She came to us from Pennsylvania. She's phenomenal. And in her time, um, she's now in the position where she has had to turn away several applicants. We're seeing just such a huge influx in the number of applications coming in during, and that's already in her six months time. Um, uh, during this time, we've also partnered with five new partner families. Uh, we had two houses that we got back from the previous homeowners and uh, got new partner families to go into those homes. We had a home that was donated to us by the Mayo Clinic that had sat empty for over two years because there was no families appropriate for that house. Um, and so we have a new partner family in there. We approved a new partner family to receive a build in 2014. Um, and what's the final partner family that was for? Oh, uh, meant, so the two rehabs, the Albert Lee one. There's one more, and I'm forgetting where that house is going to be. But um, I have new partner families, which has just been phenomenal for us. Um, uh, Andrea has also done a lot of work in committees. So um, she learned pretty quickly that our affiliate uh, it's, it's an interesting time for our affiliate, but nothing was really happening as far as committee work. So um, Andrea saw that that was a problem. You know, everything kind of needs to function for the entire ship to move. So um, she's done a phenomenal job at not only training the family selection committee, but she's also been working with uh, people in fund development, volunteer relations, just all around. Church relations has been huge for her. She sees all of that as having an impact on um, how the families find us. So um, she's created all kinds of marketing pieces for us, um, newsletters, um, and we're just out there. And we, we have not been out there, uh, in at least in my time, since December of 2012. And um, I, you know, I don't know what it looked like before that, but I know when I came on, there was really very little awareness about habitat in our area. So our VISTA, her impact has just been profound. And Great. I highly recommend uh, getting a Vista. Thanks. Yeah. Any um, yeah. any like little nugget of advice um, for for affiliates out there that might be in your same position and thinking had never had a Vista or new to this? What would yeah, you? Yeah, I would say. I mean, I'd have a couple of pieces of advice. One would be don't underestimate what a Vista can do, and really ask for what you want. You know, really get it in that work plan what you want. Uh, I know Andrea has flown through her work plan and has been able to do things above and beyond the work plan, and I just think they're extremely capable. You know, if if you get the right VISTA, um, they're going to be able to do a lot for you. So don't underestimate what they can do. Um, And also, during the application process and the recruitment process, just be very patient and diligent. Um, It's... The recruitment process, especially if you're in a rural affiliate like us, it's a little harder to recruit. Um, and I think patience was just really key for us and just diligence and just really having faith that somebody would come through for us, and they did. So um, that, that'd be my two pieces of advice, I guess. Wonderful. That's so great. Thank you, Bridget. Yeah. Great. Um, well, and then I'm also going to um, – have hi thanks april (laughs) Uh, so then we also have nathan thompson um queued up to um share about his experiences with the vista program 
So let me, I'm going to unmute Nathan here, I think. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Unmute. Oh, there we go. Nathan, are you there? I got it for you. Hey. Yep. Okay. Hey, is there, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Nathan. Hello. Hi. Can you hear us? Hi. I sure can. Great. Well, it's been a great call, so. Great. Well, yeah. thanks. Thanks for being with us. So, um, Nathan is one of our um, longtime VISTA supervisors. I think um, Nathan's first VISTA um, was also the my first year as the VISTA program manager. So that would have been 10 years ago. Um, so Nathan has hosted a number of VISTAs over the years and their affiliate has really grown in their capacity over that time. So um, I thought Bridge, or I thought um, Nathan could also provide a great perspective um, as a more experienced supervisor about the impact of VISTA. So Nathan, could you talk a little bit about, um, you know, just briefly some things VISTAs have done for your affiliate and the impact that they've had? Yep, I sure will. And uh, boy, just listen to Bridget's uh, testimony. I mean, what a great, uh, what a great job there as well. Uh, Vistas have been working with our affiliate for 10 years. Um, when I started, I was the first executive director, much like Bridget was. So we were kind of inventing a lot of our processes and what to do. Uh, Vistas have been involved uh, over those 10 years at our affiliate in just about every aspect of the affiliate. So family selection, family support, church relations, volunteer recruitment, um, marketing, um, as well as some uh, interesting things of helping us uh, design our kind of our computer network. Uh, they've really been uh, what I would say super effective in helping us grow from building two homes a year to kind of a steady five home a year affiliate. Great. Um, we also had, uh, just give you an idea I guess, uh, from 2003 till present we've served an additional 50 families with um, all the help that we've had from our VISTAs. Uh, now we have uh, three staff people and, and then also our VISTA uh, as well. So when you're looking at, uh, you know, should I go for the VISTA process? Uh, you know, I'm a small affiliate maybe, or I've never done one before. In my opinion, it is literally a no brainer. Um, you have to work a little uh, diligently, as Bridget said, to recruit the right person, but it's doable. I've done it 10 times or more. And Habitat Minnesota and their folks there also have some great advice and help on helping you do that. So it's definitely, uh, I think you're, you'll be successful in that side of things. And, um, you know, you think to yourself, $4,000, that's a lot of money, and it is for a affiliate, a nonprofit. But um, if you're successful in, in having a VISTA and helping them help you on a work plan, I mean, you will uh, win that money over many, many times over. It's definitely worth the investment of having a VISTA. Um, a couple of pieces of advice, I guess, uh, you know, I, I could be selfish and say it's a competitive process, so don't do it. There'll be more VISTAs for me. <laughs> <laughs> but then Sarah probably wouldn't let me share on the next call. So <laughs> my best advice would be, number one, do it. If you're thinking about doing it, uh, really study the process, work hard on your work plan, talk to Sarah Westling. If you've never had one before, this is a great, great opportunity for your uh, affiliate. And then uh, number two, kind of like what Bridget said, these folks can do a lot. So work with them when you get them in. Uh, be ready to, you know, have some changes happen and have some successes, have some things uh, going to be growing at your affiliate. But uh, they're uh, fun people to work with, and it's a great program. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Nathan. And, um, you know, I think your your message of, um, you know, be ready for growth and change. Um, that's great advice to to keep in mind, um, you know, as an affiliate, when you're looking to bring in a VISTA, um, you know, what they're going to be building capacity and that means they're going to be bringing changes to your organization. So you should be open and ready for that. And you should help make sure your board and your committees and, you know, your dedicated volunteers who might be used to doing some things a certain way, um, you know, make sure that they're um, ready and open to, to making changes that can help take it to the next level. So great. Thank you so much for sharing, Nathan. Um, great. So um, I am going to move along here. I had um, 
<laughs> gone a little long on some other areas, but I did want to touch on just a couple um, resources um, that I wanted to make sure folks knew about. Um, so in the original email that I had sent out, there was um, a link to the Google Drive that um, where there were um, the application form where you could access the application forms and other resources. But I wanted to show you here that I have also added another folder um, with what I've called application resources. Um, so things are moving a little slowly here. Um, let's see. So, but you'll see pulling up the Google Drive here, you'll see, so you'll see there a folder called application resources. Um, and I'll send a link out to this after the call. Um, but you can also access it using the links in the original email. Um, so two key things that I have in here already. Um, one, which can be a very valuable resource for you, is um, call, we've called this the host site application examples. Um, and what, I, what we've done is compiled um, some examples of from previous Vista app, um, previous affiliate applications for Vistas of, um, you know, good uh, responses to the application questions. So, so th these are, you know, if, if you're looking at those application questions thinking, I'm not sure what they're looking for, am I on the right track? Looking at these examples um, can be really a valuable resource to help you get an idea of, you know, what are we looking for when we ask you to describe the community need that the project will address? Or, um, you know, we have examples for each question of, of good, um, you know, responses to those application questions. So, um, so make sure to um, take a look at that as you're working on your actual application. Um, I'll also, you know, add to this folder with um, some more information. There's another document in here that's an overview of the VISTA benefits that I talked about earlier in the webinar, uh, but this is more details and, um, you know, something that you can refer back to later. Um, I'll also add to this folder an example of that memorandum of understanding that I talked about earlier, just so you can see, you know, what would that agreement look like that your affiliate would sign if you're approved for a VISTA. Um, so check out those the resources that are in the Google Drive um, there, and if you have if you're struggling to figure out how to access that or um, or having technological technological issues, um, you know just get in touch with me and I can help um, help you get access to that. So that is a Google Drive. Okay. Um, so, oh, and, and I see another question from Sarah about recruitment. So um, Sarah was asking, how did Bridget recruit her Vista, Andrea, who is from Pennsylvania? Um, so that is a great question. Um, you know, we, there, the online application um, system for Vista is designed, you know, for anyone anywhere in the country can go online and apply for these Vista positions. And so folks hear about Vista or they, or they might know about Habitat and want to work with Habitat and they want to be a Vista. So they can go into that system and search for positions anywhere in the country and apply to them. And they can apply to up to 10 different positions with their one application. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't recall exact, I don't recall specifically how um, Andrea heard about um, Habitat in Minnesota, but um, she actually had applied to the position in Austin and a couple others here in the, here in Minnesota and um, ultimately, you know, was selected for the position down there in Austin. So, um, so there are folks that are interested in relocate, are willing to relocate um, from other parts of the country for the right position. And again, that's part of the recruitment process and working with your applicants is, you know, that you might be able to find somebody from out of state. Um, I would say that's less common. We usually, we maybe have only one to two a year that come from out of state. Typically our VISTAs have some connection to Minnesota, but, um, but um, but they hear there's a variety of ways that they can hear about um, the positions. Okay, so um, just a couple more slides I wanted to hit on. I was just 
Hey, Sarah, this is yeah. April. I was just going to add to that. So when um, just at Habitat Minnesota, when we're getting applications for um, any statewide positions or the VISTA leader, mm -hmm. that, you know, if it's not a good fit for our position, we do keep an eye out for really good candidates, though, who might be interested in going other places in Minnesota. Yep. That's, that's, gr yeah, that's very true. We, and that's part of that, you know, recruitment process as we work, we'll work closely with you to find out, do you, you know, are you getting the kinds of applicants that you want or need? Um, and if not, then can we refer people to you or we can we do more outreach to find more applicants for your position? So we can really do targeted recruitment if you stay in communication with us and know that, and let us know that you need help finding applicants. Um, so just a couple more things I want to touch on um, before uh, we wrap up um, here by, so I think um, we're scheduled to wrap up by 1215. Um, but just wanted to let you all know how VISTA sites are selected. So as Nathan mentioned, um, the, the application process uh, for affiliates applying for VISTAs, it is a competitive process. We typically do receive more requests for VISTAs than number of positions that we have available. So um, it's important that you um, put together a, um, a quality application um, and a good work plan so that um, you are, you know, position, putting your best foot forward, I guess, for that review process. Um, so we have a task force, a group of people that meets and reviews the applications and makes a recommendation um, on the placements. And then ultimately, um, our program officer at the Corporation for National Community Service. Her name is Jamie, and um, Jamie is will will also have to ultimately approve any placements that um, you, that we want to recommend. So, so again, Jamie is going to read your applications. It's not just April and I here at Habitat Minnesota reading them. We have a, a committee of people who will review your applications and work plans. So you want to make sure to put your best foot forward and submit a high quality application. Sarah, we have a question about how complete do the draft applications need to be? Um, I would say, you know, I would encourage you to, um, you know, have it be a draft that that is enough so that I get a good sense of what it is you're proposing that you want your VISTA to do. Um, because what I'll do is um, give, give you feedback on your draft. Um, so the farther along it is, the, probably the the better quality feedback I can give you. Um, but, you know, if you're feeling really crunched for time and thinking, oh my gosh, by February 3rd, it's going to be hard for me to, you know, get something um, together, I would say, you know, just get started, get something on paper um, because it, you know, I can help you make your application stronger um, if you, you know, get me a draft of um, just, you know, what you're thinking. And, you know, so you want to narrow it down to what kind of, you know, what do you want the VISTA to work on? What's their work plan focus going to be? Because um, that's really the core of it is making a decision of, are we going for somebody to develop our volunteer program or to start ABWK or some combination of those two elements or, you know, so um, to at least have it narrowed down so that you know what kind of position you're, you you want to go for and, and have the draft reflect that. Um, that's where you should be at by February 3rd. Uh, which is a great segue into important dates and deadlines. Um, so the, we're, I'm asking you to submit a draft um, and of your work plan and your application by February 3rd. This is a requirement. Um, so if you plan to apply, you need to get those drafts into me um, so that um, I can review those and give you guidance on things that you can add or tweak or, um, or help you kind of um, flesh out in a little bit um, more clarity, you know, what that work plan might look like for the position that you're applying for. Um, and I might even be able to give you samples and examples from previous positions, um, you know, based on your draft, um, once I have a sense of what direction you're going. Um, other 
other important dates to have on your radar. Um, so we're also I'm also going to be doing some online work plan workshops. Um, those are scheduled for February 11th, 12th, and 13th, and you can register for those um, using the link that was in the original email that I sent out. I'll send that information out again today, so if you haven't signed up for a work plan workshop, please do that. If you're applying for the first time, if you're a new VISTA supervisor, you are required to participate in one of those work plan workshops. Um, I encourage everybody to sign up, even if you're experienced. I think the workshops would be helpful. Um, but if you're new, um, you are required to do that just because putting together the work work plan is is more of an art than a or <laughs> there's some skill involved, but there's also an art uh, to that process. So I'll be providing some guidance in those workshops. Um, and then. Sarah, uh, just to get details, can we clear, Sarah, can we yep. clarify that, is there anything about, so say somebody was a VISTA supervisor years ago, but is applying again, Maybe if you, they yeah, if you have any, new yeah, person. if you have any questions of if you're new or return or, or experienced or, you know, what applies to you, just give me a call or send me an email and we can, we can sort that out, so. I would say it depends. <laughs> yeah, just give me a call if you're not sure. Uh, can I? Oh. Also, then Parker is just clarifying that you do one of the three dates. Yes. Yep. You only need to you're sign up. Offering for one. them at different times, different days to yeah. meet people's needs. Yep. Yeah. So Parker, you've done a number of work plans, so you're not required to participate in a in a workshop, but in, but I would encourage you to do so. <laughs> Okay, um, and then February 24th is when the final drafts of the application and work plans are due. Um, so those should be emailed um, to me and February 24th, I think, I think as Nathan pointed out, that's a Monday, I think, and I've asked people to submit them, um, you know, by 9 a.m. So please don't, you know, dedicate your, don't wait till that weekend to uh, do your, do your, your application and work plan, but um, I, I am going to be out of town the, that Friday prior. So um, I thought a, a lot of times people have questions. Um, and so I wanted the due date to be on a date I'm actually in the office. So that's why we went with February 24th. But early um, submissions will be happily accepted and um, you'll get an extra pat on the back and gold star if you get your application and work plan, your final draft in early. Um, okay, so I just have a couple minutes here. Um, to uh, hit on a couple more things. Let's see. Um, so we're running a little, um, I'm running a little behind of my schedule time just because you guys have had great questions. So I'd hoped we might have a few minutes just to talk about um, this and, but it might be something, you know, for a future call that we want to spend some time on. Um, or, you know, please, you could follow up with us um, offline about your ideas. But we did just want to acknowledge that this will be the final year of Habitat Minnesota's VISTA program. Um, the Corporation for National Community Service has funded provided funding and support for VISTAs with Habitat for, um, it'll be 16 years um, when the grant ends. And that's a very long time. That's where um, one of the large, we're, we're the second longest um, this running VISTA project in the state. And, um, you know, it's just come to the point where they have to move their resources to other organizations and give non-habitat um, organizations an opportunity to um, access the resource. So, so the program will be ending, um, but we here at Habitat Minnesota are thinking about other ways to provide capacity building support. Um, once the VISTA program has ended. And um, so we'd love to hear your ideas of other other things um, that would be beneficial that we could do for your affiliates. Um, and we will also be exploring other ways that affiliates might be able to access VISTA and AmeriCorps resources. Um, for example, Habitat International has a VISTA pro program as well um, that affiliates would be eligible to apply for once the Habitat Minnesota VISTA program is ended. So, um, and there may be some other opportunities like that with the organizations here in Minnesota as well. So we'll keep you posted on that. Okay, we've hit the witching hour of 12.15. Um, so I think we need to wrap it up, but please, um, if you have questions about things that we, 
didn't cover or things I did cover that you just wanted to clarify, just feel free to email or call me and I'm happy to chat with you more. Um, and um, just thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and April, did you have any closing thoughts before I uh, wrap things up? No, this was fun to do it in a room full of people. So yeah. just that was my tip for other people in their webinars. It's kind of fun because yeah. there are little conversations that can happen then offline. And yeah, this was fun. And just remember to turn the recording 